Hi guys, Archie Luxury, and who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre-owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre-owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, it's Archie Luxury and welcome to the Paul Pluter channel. Today guys, I'm doing a couple of paid reviews. If you haven't noticed, we got new, we got some new ads that are gone on the refrigerator. Refrigerator, see you later refrigerator. Okay guys. This is paid review 21QB14. Quick 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 quick. Wist watch check Patek Philippe. 5035 annual calendar. Here we go here. This is the paid review. This is for Amex. Amex. Dear Archie, I've been really enjoying your YouTube videos for quite a few years and especially when you do watch reviews. I would love for you to review my collection. I've sent you 50 US dollars via PayPal since I know you don't do shite for free. My collection, my collection, my collection, my collection. Number one, Rolex Daytona stainless steel ceramic 116500 Panda, the Panda. Number two, number two, Patek Philippe 5146 annual calendar. This is in white gold. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful. We've got a ceramic sub date. This is the 40 mil 116610. So that's the maxi, the maxi. We've got a Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39. Uh, absolutely beautiful, beautiful. And finally, to round off this collection, we've got a Rolex Vintage Submariner 5513. Five, one, three. Yes, indeed there. We have got some beautiful, 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 beautiful pieces. What a nice little combo. Five piece combo hunger buster. Please let me know what you think of the collection and what this constellation of watches says about their owner. Please don't hold back. Give me the good, the bad, and the ugly. Again, I love your content and can't wait to see the video you make. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. So why do I think of this here? Now he sent me a lovely photo which with them all put together. That's really cool. I think this is really a cool collection. Uh, I like the way it's all white metal. So it's steel. And the paddock is white gold. Very beautiful indeed there. Um, I think we've got some really good things happening here. I, I quite like it. I quite like it. Um, the, the panda, what can you say? The panda, panda is just such an iconic, it's probably one of the most desired stainless steel Rolexes. It is the most desired of the modern collection. Uh, it's beautiful. It's a really nice watch. Um, I think it's crazy money, crazy, crazy money they're going for. But hey, that is supply and demand. It's supply and demand. You don't like it, don't buy. No one forces anyone to buy anything. So it's a supply and demand situation. Um, it's a lovely watch. Then he's got the, the Patek Philippe, the annual calendar, the 5146, which is actually the, it traces its ancestry to the 5035. So it's kind of the, the current model of this, this original. This was the one that started it all. Uh, the 5146, it's 39 mils. This is 37. It's just a smidgen, you know, it's just, the proportions, it's a really, they've brought it 
when they made this, they wanted to make it like a 36. When they made that, it was a bigger kind of uh, piece there, which is, is kind of what a lot of, you know, I think that 39, sort of just the sub 40 mark is a great size for a paddock complication there. I think it's absolutely beautiful. You've got it on the uh, beautiful deployant clasp there. Abs it's, it, it's a very comfortable watch. It's a beautiful watch. I, I love Patek Philippe all the way myself. Uh, then, then you know, I, I, I see the next piece you've got is the, the sub-date in steel. I think that's another superb piece. Just can't, can't fault that can't fault that at all 40 mil or 41 doesn't really matter i think the 40 mil ceramic great watch great watch indeed there now the next piece here we've got is the op um um i'm a little bit let down in the op i would have preferred it if you would have had a batman or a Pepsi, or even if you wanted to go white dial and explore a 242 mil, that would keep the genre. The genre would be perfect. You'd have the yin and the yang with the white dials and, and blacker sort of dials there. What's the paddock? Is it sort of a gray? I think the paddock's a gray color. Um, yeah, I, I think the Oyster Perpetual is kind of a nothing watch. I, I mean, I love it. I love it. It's a great watch. No, it's not. It's, 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 I think they've become very hot. I, I'd probably get out of that and get myself a beautiful Explorer 2 42 mil. I'd go 42 because keep it in the genre, the same genre as the, the collection. It's a modern modern kind of uh collection so i i i would seriously say there winner winner chicken dinner I, I i think i think i think the oyster perpetual lets me down it lets me down i'm thinking you know what i would have preferred a explorer 2 if you had an explorer 2 there the ying and the yang i would have completely got this collection so I personally would get rid of the OP, get an Explorer 2, and then you've got all your bases covered. You've got a Daytona as your chronograph. You've got a sub-date steel ceramic as your diver. And then you'd have your Explorer 2 as your GMT, your paddock as your hort horology, and then your vintage sub as the vintage piece. So I could get the yin and the yang of that. That's kind of what I would do. I'm a little bit disappointed. I suppose, you know, I'm not saying it's a it's a beautiful collection. It's it just could be so complete if you had the Explorer 2 instead of the Oyster Perpetual. It could be so perfect. This would be amazing. Amazing. So I kind of um yeah i i kind of think it's just almost but not quite it's kind of like being a vp you want to be president or ceo one day you know vice president doesn't have the same ring this collection could be so great if you got rid of the Oyster Perpetual and put an Explorer 2 in there, I would love it. I would really give me a yin and the yang. I'd go off on a positive charge. But instead, I'm left wondering. I'm just left hanging a bit. So, yeah, that's kind of how I feel on it. I'm sorry to not to be super pot. I mean, I love it. It's a great collection. The Panda, man, that's a holy grail. You got the eight, the, the the annual calendar, the paddock five one four six. Absolutely, I mean I'm wearing a paddock as I'm making this review. That, that that's a gorgeous watch. You got a ceramic sub, man. That's a perfect dive watch. It just lets me down by the oyster perpetual. Uh, the the sub. What do I think of the five five one three? Um. 
it's a bit of a minefield vintage are these original is it original hand service style all this sort of bullshit comes out there um do you have the bracelet you know just a few little silly questions come out when when i uh, the vintage sub i i i look i I'd like to know, is it a vintage sub you bought? Was it a family story to it? It's kind of, I'm left scratching. I'd like to know a bit more background on it there. Um, okay, please let me know what you think of the collection. So I've said, look, it's a really great collection. I just feel the yin and the yang is out because you've got the Oyster Perpetual. Get rid of this stupid Oyster Perpetual white dial and put an Explorer 2 in. And what this constellation of watches says about their owner... Anyone who asks me, what does the watch say about the owner? They're needy. Needy and um, that's just not a cool thing to say. You know, that's like me saying, does it make me cool having a panda? You know, that's very uncool. Very uncool. What does it say about the owner? Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's, I tell you what. I think you have to keep reading Patek magazine for a while. That's not really what you're supposed to say. You're not really supposed to say that. What does it say about the owner? The owner's needy. He's needy. What it tells me is that you can have a beautiful collection there and still be needy and desperate like the rest of us. So I don't think it's uncool to ask, does this collection make me cool? Ooh, it's uncool. Fonzie wouldn't be happy. Fonzie wouldn't be happy. Um, you know, if you hadn't have asked that stupid question, I'd say, I'd have a lot more respect for you. People who say, what does it say about me? See, something's lacking. Are they buying it to impress people? What are they trying to achieve? See, you got to buy these things for your own self. I don't really care i mean yeah okay i like people to say nice watch nice watch you like a bit of kudos yeah 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 but you know at the end of the day it's your money you buy what you want i i don't know why that's so it, that's such a horrible question it kind of it's kind of the reason that kind of question is asked by people who buy gold rolexes solid gold on bracelets that's the sort of person who asks that question yeah, I think it, it sort of, it, it, it worries me. When people ask, does this make me cool or what does it say about me? I think there's some real big psychological problems there. Uh, I, I don't understand. Why would you ask that question? It's like, you know, if you drive a Ferrari or a Maserati, what does it say about the owner? He's a prick. I mean, you just, you, they just are pricks, you, you, you know? What does it say about the owner? Man, you shouldn't be, you can't, Buying intrinsic goods doesn't really make a person cool or knowledgeable, okay? A lot of cool people wear Patek and Rolex, but buying that good doesn't necessarily make one cool. Does that make sense? And it's very uncool to ask if this makes you cool. That's very, ooh, cringeworthy. Cringeworthy, that's the term, cringeworthy. So... I, I'd had a lot more respect for you before you put that question there. What does it say about... What do, you, what do you want it to say about the owner? What does the owner... See, that's what worries me, is then. Then it gives a false reading. Is the owner trying to be cool? Well, that's not really cool. The owner shouldn't be doing that. Does the owner buy these things to be something they're not really? And that's the problem. That is the problem, okay? So... I kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing, it's a good collection. Just did, let down by the Oyster Perpetual. Let down by the lack of story about the 5513. See, the whole point of having a vintage watch there is not just to have the vintage watch. It's to have the backstory. Why did you get it? What happened? And Was it your father's? And, you know, did he serve in Vietnam and get it at the, you know, the P, what's, what's those, those army stores, the PO or PX? Did he get it there or did he, I, I don't know. You got, that, that, that's kind of, that's, that's kind of, you didn't give me any backstory. All you do is you, you, you show me what you have and then you say, what does this constellation, I mean, who the hell uses that word of watches say about their owner? Uh, anyone who asks that question is a bit of a dick to be completely 
honest with you, but you know, I, I, I don't want to be too nasty there. I mean, you did send me 50 bucks, but anyone who asks that is very needy, needy people, you know? It's like a woman who says, do these jeans make, do I look fat in these jeans? Do I look good? You know, you know they're fishing for compliments. I mean, you, you understand. Okay, guys, that's the review today. Please like, subscribe, and tell your friends. And remember, Archie Luxury cannot survive on Google Ads alone. I desperately need paid reviews. <clears throat> I need paid reviews to pay the bills. Pay the bills, Fikers. Pay the bills. Get a paid review done. Also, you could join me on Patreon. Patreon, look down below in the description. If you join me on Patreon, I share details and things that other people don't get access to. Okay, guys, I will see you in the next one. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends, and don't be afraid to get a paid review. 50 US dollars for a paid review. It helps me stay full-time on YouTube, and I will see you in the next one. 50 US dollars paid review. I can't survive on Google Ads. I need your support. And guys, you could also sponsor me on Patreon. Patreon allows you to pay as little as a dollar a month to keep me on YouTube. Hey guys, Archie Luxury, who do I recommend for watches in Brisbane and Sydney? Vintage Watch Co, that's correct. Vintage Watch Co in Brisbane Arcade in Brisbane and the Strand Arcade in Sydney. Vintage Watch Co, Brisbane and Sydney. Ronnie, I've known him since the late 90s. Ronnie is a top bloke, Luke is a great guy. Vintage Watch Co. That is who I recommend in Australia. Check out Vintage Watch Co. and the guys' amazing range of watches. They also do service and repairs. Vintage Watch Co. That is where the pontiff goes. You know, some of my paddocks came from Vintage Watch Co. That's right, guys. Vintage Watch Co.